I am Ansu Kaplan, and this is Regio TV, your local online news provider in the Overstrand. Thank you for your wonderful support. During the past week alone, almost 70,000 people watched our videos. According to Facebook metrics, the majority of Regio TV's viewers by numbers are now from Cape Town, followed by Hermanus, and then Claymont and the surrounding towns. Spring is here and Food Lovers Market is celebrating with these great deals. Buy a large pawpaw, a large pineapple, a banana thrift pack, two tasty kiwis and a one kilogram apple bag, all for only 59 rand per combo. And enjoy pork spare ribs at just 69.99 per kilo. Food Lovers Market, the best in fresh, guaranteed. In this week's programme, a wonderfully uplifting story about a former World War II fighter pilot from Hermanus that turned 100 this week. Then we speak to a young man from Zwilichle who is aiming for the stars after entering his short film for national competition. But first, here's Gerard Grobler with a roundup of this week's news highlights. Thank you, Ansu. Regio TV came in for quite a bit of flack following our insert on the Claymont Wildlife Sanctuary last week. We were, among other things, compared to America's Fox News and even accused of being animal abuse activists. Fortunately, the vast majority of responses were positive and supportive. We will keep you updated on the issue. In Claymont, the Overhills community marched on the police station on Tuesday evening to protest the ongoing gender-based violence in our communities. At the weekend, a Zimbabwean citizen allegedly stabbed his 29-year-old girlfriend to death. Last week, the body of a 31-year-old woman was discovered in Austin. In both cases, arrests have been made. On Saturday, residents across the Overstrand gathered to protest along main thoroughfares in Hermanus, Claymont and Gansby. It was part of a much larger protest in towns and cities all over the country under the banner of the Move One Million campaign. Was the protest in any way significant? Yes, I believe so. It was organized by ordinary South Africans, civil society, without any party political involvement. In a way, they were telling political parties that we don't trust you anymore. We are tired of your lack of action and vision for the future. There is a similar type of reaction happening around farm murders, and I think it has the ANC worried. But it should also concern the Democratic Alliance, the governing party in our municipality. People want solutions, a new vision for a brighter future, and you are not giving it to them. Tell us why you're here today. Um, because I think that we all need to do something in this country to change and move one million and stand together. We can't let the corruption continue any longer. Whereas white communities are hot for, black and colored communities are desperate for some kind of hope of a better life. It's all about jobs and housing. We cannot wait for the government. Local political leaders and the municipality should be the change leaders. We need to press the reset button and come up with new strategies. We need our local economic development director to come up with plans to incentivize businesses to grow and employ more people. We need to encourage businesses from elsewhere to settle here and open branches. Give them financial incentives if we have to. The municipality needs to start thinking more like a business. Less meetings less bureaucracy and more action. There's no money for housing. The municipality's plan of building 500 homes a year is dead. Maybe it's time we accepted that informal housing is here to stay. Formalize townships, give people title to their land and in that way try and stop the influx of people. Make rules and stick to them. Maybe take another look at the reblocking concept. Why not do a pilot project? Rather spend our money on streets and other infrastructure in townships and help people to rebuild or improve their shacks. 
Give them hope. Above all, consult with them before you do anything. If people do have to move, do it in an organized, consultative and dignified way. What is the Hanmanis Police Station? Zwilichle Primary School, Skulpuk and Zwe Taxi Rank have in common. Well, they all feature in Isililo, The Outcry, a short local film ended for the 48-hour film project in Johannesburg. I'm Sandy Sile Ndevu. Um, I'm a writer, uh, but I've just started writing now, now, Joe. So I'm working on my first project. Um, I've been trying to to do this for some for some time now. Um, I, I I just got the opportunity now to write. So I'm Sandy Sile, the writer. I can introduce myself like that. That I'm a writer. Yes. And and tell us something about your project. Um, um, uh, last uh, past weekend, I was working on a 48-hour film where we have to write and edit and shoot it in just in 48 hours. So the project became like a university to me because it was my first project. So I learned how this filmmaking thing goes and it was amazing. It was amazing. Yes. And you have to do everything yourself? You have to be involved in everything? I was actually involved in everything even though I had some professionals that I was working with. So I also learned a lot with them, like with the organizing and stuff like that, putting everything together, trying to get some funding, the rejections, all that stuff. So yes, um, I created that uh, short film, then I, I organized the team to work with. And that, that goes into a competition now, where it competes with other films? Yes, where it competes with other films, uh, yes. So it was <laughs> really exciting, yeah. Now for a wonderfully uplifting story. Michael and Betty Welchman are residents of Kidbrook in Hermanus and have been married for almost 75 years. Amazing! Even more amazing is that on the 8th of September, Michael turned 100. Michael, a radiologist, was a fighter pilot during the Second World War. And this week, the Whale Coast branch of the South African Air Force Association arranged a special event to celebrate the occasion. This included a banner, a cake and bagpipes dating from the First World War. We were at Marble Arch and we thought we weren't going to get our Christmas ration. So a hurricane who cleaned out the wing, they took the guns out cleaned out the drop tax and sent Bert Velkenwood down to Cairo to go and get rations. <laughs> uh, the idea was he was going to fill the drop tanks with brandy and the gun ports with whiskey, bottles of whiskey. Well, he brought it back and um, the our local Cape Corps were given the job to start siphoning the brandy out of the drop tanks so we didn't see many of them for the rest of the day. <laughs> and we were very fortunate here we had an enormous amount of brandy and an enormous amount of whiskey but the trouble was everybody around had heard about this so we had lots of visitors. <laughs> and then a, a Dakota pitched up and told us that they'd brought up our Christmas rations. So now we had a bit of everything. So, so we were very popular for a while. Thank you, Marty Fisser and the South African Air Force Association for sharing this with us. We will upload the full 15-minute interview Tinus Leroux did with Michael in 2012, separately on our channel. Now it's over to Johannes Frunemann for this week's synopsis of our local newspapers. For this week's Quran, there are also many misdeeds stories in there. There are many murders that are being reported. Some are so bad that people don't want to hear them. But there is also a story from Dagha, which is a very Dagha story. That is about Betty's Bay from all places. And there is also good news, at least in the Western Village News, about the plan of the potential government to stop the Christian and 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 the Christian om die gevolgen van drankmisbruik tegen te werken. Om te kijken of ons die misdaad wat die gevolgen is van drankmisbruik of mens dit een beetje kan ook slaan. 
So dis van die belangrike studies in van die Sveekse Korante, daar is dan een paar ander uh, positieve studies die, die uh, terugvoer oor die uh, groot fondsinsameling daar by Hoorsko Hermanus laas week, paar mooie foto's in die uh, Village News, en dan is daar ook een paar uh, positieve studies in die Herald, onder meer die mense hier so in uh, Kleinmond, wat bezig is om tuin te maak daar voor die stadsal, en uh, gewoon het hand uit die muis steek en kyk wat hulle kan doen om het dorp uh, mooier te maak. Maar wat ek vandag uh, vooral ook oor wil gesels is die plek van advertenties in ons korante. Jy weet van dat uh, korante die eerste keer in Zuid-Afrika verskyn en 220 jaar gelede was uh, advertenties nog altijd een belangrijke component. En dit sien jy daar om die korante aan die gang te hou Maar dit is ook uiterst belangrike inlichting wat hulle aan ons as lezers gee. Nou, verskillende publikaties het natuurlijk verskillende gehoore en hulle advertenties verskil daarom. As mens kyk na die Overstrand Herald, sal mens sien heel wat van die advertenties is plaaslike dienste wat aangebied word, dokters, tandartse en die smeer sy. Op die voorblad, een van die apteke wat die specials een bykie adverteer en dis vooral die specials wat ons moes van hou om na te kyk. Nou, ek het so een van die invoegsels wat mens kry in van die korante somtijds, van die groot supermarktgroepe, en het is belangrijk, want hulle sê vir ons waar ons goeie prijse kan kry, en vandagse dag is het belangrijk om te kyk waar jy die verste met jou rand kan kom. So, wanneer jy daai binnengoed van die korant uittrek, moet nie jou mondskeef trek nie, sien het lewens daar as goeie potentiële, goeie inlichting wat jy kan gebruik om geld te spaar. En dan is het natuurlijk wel toch ook een feit, dat as het nie was vir die adverteerders nie, dan het ons nie korante gehad nie. Our featured business of the week is the delightful Hemingways of Hermanus. This is one of those totally unique and quirky places in Hermanus that you just have to visit. They recently relocated to Victoria Square, near to the Pig and Pay, where we met up with owner Beth Hunt. We all started Harbour Road, where we opened a bookshop in 1995, and we were there for 25 years. Um, one of our highlights was being uh, voted by Louis Vuitton to feature in his Cape City Guide, and that was about 2013. And it was very good in Harbour Road at the time because of tourism. We had lots of tourists, and we had lots to offer in, um, in Hermanus and the Overberg. But unfortunately, um, as time went on, um, we, we began to see that um, Harbour Road was going to be part of the lockdown scenario um, and that tourism was going to, in fact, be, be zero. Um, so we, we realised we had to make a move um, because of the high rentals in that area um, and we would have to then swing to another market, which would be the locals. So fortunately, Noel, my husband, was taking a walk one day and he saw this uh, little cottage, which is in fact a historical cottage, and um, the flower shop used to be here, and they were uh, moving across to the eatery restaurant. So the premises were waiting for us to say, we'll take them, which we did. And we've been here just over a month. I would not recommend anybody moving a bookshop, a 25 year old bookshop. It's really had its uh, impact on us, but we love the premises. We love this new space and we are very happy. And we've had so much support from the locals. We've had so many welcoming messages and lots of warmth. It's really bottling with energy here and good vibes. That's it for the week. Did you know that one of the adventure sports on the menu in the Overstrand is whitewater rafting on the Palmit River? 